I wanted to talk a bit about modulation amounts and modulation signals. It's a bit of a boring topic, but nonetheless, it's maybe interesting for you. So um, what you do most of the times when you modulate something inside of Bitwig Studio is that you usually apply an amount of between zero and plus one and minus one when you have this bipolar mode. So in Bitwig, it looks like this. You have like an instrument, like a polymer synthesizer. And then you have here a macro knob. And then you modulate something. Let's say the cutoff, right? So here with this knob in this position, we have zero. In this position, we have plus one. And if you want to exceed this here, you have to go into this modulation mode and then you have to change here the modulation amount to have an, a different maximum modulation or modulation amount or end point, right? So every time you go uh, in here and you want to change the maximum amount, right, of this position, you have to go into modulation mode and then change this and then go out of this and now 100% is this end point. Um, then there's of course, bi of course bipolar mode. So now you can go to here and then you go to minus one and then you end up on the opposite position of plus one. So this is also possible. So like I said, most of the times you operate between plus one and minus one. But you can also exceed this range to let's say um, plus two plus three and this has some benefits sometimes and usually you can't do this inside of this uh, modulation matrix here there's actually only one modulator that does this and this is i think it's the stack spread modulator here when you use voice stacking and you switch this here to value you can see it's you it's uh zero time, one time, two time, three times, up to 15 times. And when you modulate something with this, you actually get values or modulation amounts over one, over plus one, it exceeds plus one. And this has some benefits. Um, for instance, let's say you modulate this here by uh, five semitones, right? So now the first voice, in value mode gets, um, you can see this also your zero plus 15, right? The first voice gets zero times. The second voice gets w one time. So exactly this modulation amount here. But if you switch this higher to three or let's say up to 16, the last voice, voice 16, gets, I don't know, something here. So as it's exceeding basically your maximum defined modulation range. It goes above one. Uh, and sometimes this is handy. Uh, I th like I said, this, it's the only modulator here I know that does this. Maybe you know another one, uh, but I think this is the, the only one. Um, not, I don't know why it doesn't show you here, here um, these different settings, but I don't know. Um, I show you this in the grid because it's easier to explain there, I think. So let's use a macro knob, which is just a value knob here. So zero plus one, we use a readout here. You can also see this zero plus one, right? Easy peasy. And now we can take, let's say, a multiply and multiply this with a constant. Let's say 16. Different readout. Now, zero is zero in both cases, but 100% here is one here and here it's 16 because we multiplied actually everything by 16. So we can define now here with this constant the endpoint of the modulation. Um, so now you can say I have maybe a filter. And I modulate this here. Let's use a modulator out. Let's modulate this here by just one semitone, right? 
So now I can define without going into this modulation mode here, I can define the endpoint of this. 100% is the endpoint maybe 64 semitones. Right, you can see uh, it's going up. Zero is this, one is now 64 semitones up. So I can define the range by just changing this constant without going into this modulation mode. When I use a modulator here on top and go into this, remember the endpoint is always plus one. So I need to use here this here. Um, I need to go into the modulation mode. So zero is here. 100% is here. If I want to change this endpoint to a different position, I have to go into this modulation mode, change this. Now the endpoint is here and I'm done. But here I can change this, just this constant. Even though the modulation amount is still the same, it's just one semitone, right? But I can define easily here with just a constant where the endpoint is exactly, yeah, Precise basically. So I can say the endpoint is 64 semitones here above this above this um, start position. So you may say, why do I need this? So sometimes you can exchange this constant for a different value you get from a different parameter. Maybe you get it from the voice tag modulator, or maybe you get it from the notes. Um, and that's what I used when I created these pulley rhythms, right? So I basically used here my pitch input pitch input right from the piano roll and then you can see if I if you use here the the readout if I go up C3 is zero and C sharp three is plus zero dot zero zero eight which is very weird uh, but Maybe you want to def want to define for each note you go up here, right? You want to define one semitone here, and that's not easy to do. So you need to multiply this here, multiply this with a constant of ten. So now we can see one note up. It's actually not ten. It's uh, I think it's one hundred twenty. Yeah, it's one hundred twenty. So now C three is zero. C sharp three is one, D is two, D sharp three is three. So each note has basically an integer. So now you can take this signal with the modulator here, go into this modulator and because you know each note is now an integer above zero, you can uh, take a modulator with this and modulate this here by exactly one semitone. And now you know each note gets basically, each note you go up gets here also a semitone up. So you can precisely work with these integers and apply exactly the right amount of modulation to your target without actually changing the modulation amount, going into this modulation mode and, you know, change the maximum value. You can work with just integers, apply just one small amount, and then it multiplies basically every time you add a number to it. And this can be handy sometimes when you, when you don't know the end point of your modulation, or if you work with, let's say here, voice stacking, and you want to increase the voices, and you don't want to actually go into this modulation amount and want to change the maximum modulation amount each time you change the voice stacking. So you just change the voice stacking and it applies the right amount. So you can do this, let's say here with, um, let's remove all of this here. Let's say you have here um, zero voices, use the voice stack spread, you switch this here to value, two voices and then you modulate this here by one semitone and now you know voice one has root position voice two applies one semitone and if you increase the voice stacking to 16 you know exactly voice 16 has 16 semitones added to the root position exactly 
And um, yeah, if you use this basically like before with a plus one or zero to plus one modulation amount here, you have to count up basically every time. So let's say with um, six voices, you want to go up to six, right? So we have to define here six semitones up. Okay, so now it fits, but now you increase the voice stacking at some point to 16. So now um, it scales basically, or it divides basically this range into 16 equal spaces, which doesn't make sense for you. So now you have to go into the modulation amount because you increase the voice stacking and you have to change the modulation amount to 16. So now you have to do basically two things every time you change the voice stacking. And with this uh, value method here, you don't need to do this. You just modulate this here by one semitone and then you can change the voice stacking here and it changes accordingly. So this is where this becomes handy sometimes. Um, um, when I want to show you this, maybe not everyone knows this, that you can actually apply modulation above plus one. So um, this is the reminder or this is the tutorial about this. I know it's a pretty boring topic, uh, but maybe you need this at some point and you can, you know, save this in the back of your brain and come back next time you maybe need this. Okay, so this, uh, this is a pretty boring video for you <laughs> today. Um, if you like the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and um, see you in the next video. Bye.